What's going on everyone? In today's video, I will be discussing my top five tips for the current state of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. My previous tip video and strategies is very much still relevant today, uh, but as the game changes, you know, we also have to adjust our tactics. So these tips will be beneficial to anyone, but probably especially free to play newer players. Um, these are definitely things that I practice and do consistently and have helped get me to where I am in the game. So let me know in the comments if you're using any of these tips and any other tips that you might find helpful that'll help other players out. And before we get into my top five tips, um, a little bonus one to start and it's about guilds. Being in a strong guild or a guild that works for you is very important in this game. Uh, when I first started playing, I was stuck in a lower level guild. It was not growing, um, but I felt some sort of weird loyalty to these strangers I've never met before. It was basically just a quick stop for lower level players. And then once they got kind of big enough, they moved on to other guilds. So it never really had that chance to grow and expand. You know, lots of guild leaders do a lot of work for their guild to promote it. This one didn't necessarily have that. And I'm normally a loyal person and I was just loyal for far too long. Um, and you know, I missed out on a lot of early rewards because of sitting in a lower level guild. Now, does that mean you could just go and join a top level guild? Likely not, you know, there's probably GP requirements and there's gonna be requirements as far as how active you are. You know, the higher the guild ranks you climb are going to be, you know, are you active on Discord? Are you gonna participate? Um, are you gonna do the things the guild wants you to do? I've kind of found myself in, you know, I have a roster that could probably go closer to the higher end guilds, but I'm not willing to commit the time to like remod my lineup for a territory wars or do all these other things that some of these top end guilds do. I'm just not into the game that much to where it's that enjoyable for me. So I have found a nice cozy kind of middle ground where yes, we are competitive. The guild is growing um, and they, you know, requirements are to be a little bit active on discord and to at least participate. But outside of that, there's not any extra crazy, you know, um, time commitments for my guild. So I may not be getting top, top rewards, but I'm doing good enough that it supports me where I'm at in the game. And it also supports my lifestyle. So I think you got to choose something that benefits, you know, all those things for the type of player you want to be. All right, so now let's get into my top five. And these are just in a random order. They're not necessarily like my number one's not necessarily number one. These are just five things that I do that help me and will likely help you. All right, so number five is a pretty straightforward one and it's seeing a farm straight through to the end. I can't tell you how many times I see it in Grand Arena or even someone who's a newer player is asking for help with their lineup. And the thing I constantly see is, they have a gas team, they have a CLS team, they have a Padme team, and they're all gear eight, gear nine across the board. It's like they unlocked the team, got it to seven stars, moved on to the next thing. You know, that, you by spreading your resources across all those different teams, it's gonna be hard to take anyone up to like the relevant levels they need to be really good in this game. So it sounds like a simple, you know, tip, but, so many people get distracted by the shiny object syndrome, right? Like, oh, this new character came out. I need to farm that team for that. Or this one just came out. I need this. Or there's a new Galactic Legend coming that I'm going to be into. I should start farming the base requirements. We keep spreading ourselves so thin as a free-to-play player um, that we never end up with a super strong quality team. So I'll like to emphasize again, it is so critical to once you commit to a farm, like I'm going to farm gas. Farm it, get it up to gear 12, get it up to relic levels, you know, to where you're comfortable investing that gear before you move on to the next to the next team you're gonna do. All right, number four, we're gonna talk about squad arena tokens and we're gonna be talking about prestige. This guy right here, if you have all the characters maxed out in here, it doesn't even have to be all of them, just the ones that are critical to what you're doing in the game, you should then be spending your excess on prestige 
this resource, especially with the sh with the you know hopefully the shipload of content coming right. Uh, we got the profundity just down the road and all the other capital ships. It actually takes a lot of these to actually upgrade your ship, and the ship abilities are very critical, especially how integral of a part ships are for a getting fleet arena crystals that supplies our income as a free free to play player and our grand arena grand arenas become so important and ships are a guaranteed component of it so the more ships and the higher level ships you have the better now just as an example i constantly am buying prestige because i don't need anything else uh, in here i might buy character shards what i need uh currency for the shard store but mostly i'm farming this i'm at over 2000 let's go over to my ships for a second All my capital ships are fully upgraded with the exception of some of the lower level ships I don't really use. But, you know, because it's such a resource drain. Like I got Mace in the Relics already. So you know what? Not the greatest capital ship, but let's uh, let's upgrade him. He's, all, he's around level sixes, right? Let's just, going through this quick round of upgrading him, watch how, again, I'm gonna be killing myself because I am right now hardcore in the profundity farm. I'm so close to actually being able to unlock it day one. It'll be my first time as a free-to-play player unlocking something new. Um, so hopefully I don't screw myself over here, but like just upgrading our friend uh, Mace here, right? Like those 150s just deplete. I will, I don't want to take this under a thousand, but just for the purpose, let's just do this. All right. Like, that was just upgrading from six to the max level. And that, you know, significantly depleted my stock, right? If you're new to the game, right? I'm down to 968. If you're new to the game and you're trying to get, you know, a rebel lineup going you're trying to get an empire lineup going and then you're saving your um guild event 2 coat tokens for negotiator malevolence trying to upgrade all those three ships you're not going to be able to do it you're gonna have to pick you know you have to either half upgrade them all or pick one and focus on it and it's going to be a while to farm those tokens again i've been since the executor since i've drained everything on the executor i've been farming those tokens ever since then and i've had the executor since the second time it came through um, and I was up in the 2000s. So it takes a lot to get them. So, you know, please think ahead. Start farming now if you can, because when you start getting those capital ships and you want to start competing in the higher ends of the game, you're really going to be able to up. You want to be able to upgrade them. You don't want to be stuck with a, you know, a ship with half the abilities. Okay. Number three is crystal spending. So you start saving up all these crystals and as a free to play player, that's your currency for, I need to go out and make something happen in this game. I need some last minute shards of this character. I need this piece of gear to get where I wanna go, right? Like this is, this is kind of your cash to use wherever you want. Is there smarter places to use it over others? Yes, like absolutely, but sometimes with crystals, we can't just always be looking for the most efficient thing. We gotta be looking for things that benefit our lineup the most. Um, I'm gonna show you the things that I've been spending it on. Um, the obvious is when you are trying to get someone to relic and you need that last piece of you know gear 12 gear, going out and getting that, you know, that's a gimme. Um, but, you know, I'm, again, I've been in the middle of the profundity, you know, um, farm right now, right? So I've been buying, if I have an extra couple hundred, I've been buying a couple extra shards of Radis on top of my triple refresh of farming his node. So I have to go hard in on Radis. Like he's basically, he's my, he's my factor here that is going to either get me um, the profundity or not. Everything else is right at the requirement it needs to do. Radis is the last thing. Um, so I'm farming hard for it. And that makes sense for my roster because that's what I need. You know, in addition to Radis, you know, I spoke glowingly of my guild earlier because I found a perfect place to be. But my guild is just, is about 10 to 15 million under the requirements for getting Relic 9 gear material. So there's only one way for me to get them. And that is to buy the Relic 9 gear. 
just to show you. I've been buying. I've bought this three times already, which is why it's at 15. Right? It the Droid Brain does show up in the weekly shipment. It is expensive. Is it worth it? Probably not. But for me, I can't get this piece anywhere else, and I'm not gonna let it. I'm not gonna let essentially my guild be the reason why I don't get you know, the profundity when it gets released. So I've been saving up my crystals and I've been buying this, you know, every chance I get. For the requirements that I need, I only need the one gear nine. So I have to just get this to 20 and I'm done. So I gotta buy it one more time um, and we're done. So that's another place where I've been trying to strategically use my crystals. Another good spot to use crystals is when you see this relic cargo completion pack for relic materials. If for 1600, it's actually a pretty decent deal. And again, this isn't like if you only have 1600 crystals, blow it on this. Normally when I'm at a surplus of like 3000, 4000, 5000 crystals, um, this is something I will splurge on. And typically, you know, this is like obviously the drop rates of what you could get. And typically I find the results look like this. If, if you were to add this up, um, as far as the cost of crystals, you're actually getting a bit of a deal here. So this one, um, I'm an advocate of buying um, when you see it. If you got extra crystals going around and you're, you know, you know your next couple things you're gonna be working on is taking characters up to higher relic levels, this is definitely worth it to take a look at. All right, number two on my list is how you spend all Macrons. And my suggestion is to be selfish, use these on grand arena characters. Grand Arena by far has the most reward, happens the most often. And by having some of these Omicron characters, it's like not quite like having a Galactic Legend. You know, it gives you on offense a viable team to use that might not otherwise be. Or defense, it creates a solid team on D that the other team might have to, you know, pull one of their better teams out just to beat it. So if you look at my lineup here, as far as Grand Arena Omicrons, like Aiden, I have. I got Dash Rendar, you know, Ventress, Wampa, Qui-Gon. Where's our boy Akbar? I know Akbar's in here somewhere. There he is. There's Akbar. He's got one. Um, Chief Chirp has got one. So you can see I've pretty much have bought all of the Grand Arena ones. Now, this isn't to say never buy Territory Wars, Territory Battle ones, um, but I think you should be selfish first. At least get a few on Grand Arena before you consider the other ones. And then take a look at your guild. Like my guild, the, our guild leaders do a lot and they don't really ask a lot of us, but the one request was to at least get the Phasma um, Omicron um, so we could set a whole territory or zone with them. Um, and that was something I obliged and did for them. But outside of that, I haven't really, you know, gone crazy on the other on the other ones. And it is a extremely, it's a limited quantity that you can get for them. So again, be selfish, go for the Grand Arena ones. And then if you are in a good guild and they are good to you and they do have a request, you know, then maybe sprinkle one or two in there, but definitely um, for at least your first few, stay selfish with those because you will see the better rewards, which is gonna to lead to a better roster. And in the end, that's gonna help your guild out in the end regardless. So throughout the video, I've been kind of been alluding to how important Grand Arena is. And my number one thing to you know, strategize, focus on, and get right to the point where you're pretty confident with it is, you know, it's kind of a basic idea for Grand Arena, but it's one I see misplayed all of the time, and it's how to set and use Galactic Legends. Now, let me just use this example here. This is not to call out the individual. I see this a lot. And by all means, I don't need people to fix this because this allows people to me, like me to win. So this is Kyber 3. Um, I either have two or three Galactic Legends at a time. I have three now. I used to have two for the longest time. This is a typical opponent I go up against, right? Let's just take a quick look at their roster. And they are packing not one, two, three, four, but five GLs. So I am at a five to three or even two disadvantage in this situation. 
That should normally be game, set, match for the Galactic Legend advantage. I know Datacrons have come out, and I know there are some obviously non-Galactic Legends counters to other ones, but like even at my current level in the game, I don't have a lot of those counters that people use to the relic levels that are needed to win. So I primarily rely on a Galactic Legend versus Galactic Legend. Um, you know, the one instance where I don't is um, I recently just beat, for example, um, I beat Jedi Master Luke a lot with gas. Um, and I know there's been some tweaks and stuff like that over the months, but just recently with now with Datacrons, with a Datacron, I was able to easily handle a Jedi Master Luke team with gas. Um, so, you know, obviously there's things you can do, um, but for the fo purpose of this, I'm just gonna focus on the Galactic Legend aspect only. And just, it's just a simple strategy. Will this work out 100% of the time? No, but it, it will work the majority of the time, especially at the lower end of rosters where people don't have all the counters and like the, you know, unique teams you need to maybe beat these without GLs. So five to three, five to two advantage here. <clears throat> This individual sets one Galactic Legend on one territory, so Ray on one, and then on the other territory, he sets Sith Eternal. So for me, with I think, say the scenario, I have three Galactic Legends. I'm putting one on defense, and I typically save two for offense. It's typically my standard thing. If they set, right, they have the advantage. They have two plus two on me. If they set three on D, and even if I commit all three, you know, I might be able to beat them depending if I have the right matchups in Galactic Legends, but then they have two more on me for taking out teams and getting extra banners because those are obviously gonna be easy wins for them. You know, if I set one on defense like I did or two on defense and they set their three, then I'm pretty much guaranteed not being able to get through them. Right? It's just it's just simple math. When you when you outnumber the other individual, you should be in the driver's seat. Now, caveat. I will say that probably maybe a lot of people don't update their defense. And if that's the case in this scenario, then so be it. Some people it might just simply be that and I'm able to take advantage of players who aren't that, you know, looking into things. That's that's completely one thing. But again, if you have five Galactic Legends in your, on your roster, um, I would be looking at maybe switching that up a little bit. So I had originally felt like being at a disadvantage for Galactic Legends meant I cannot possibly win, but it has not been further from the truth because there are a lot of people who just don't know how to deploy their roster correctly. Um, you know, and then you can get creative again. If I'm going up against a similar Galactic Legends or they have one more, I typically stay to my regular setup. I keep enough on offense where I know I can get through everything. And as long as it's even the way through, I'm really good at chips and I know I'm going to win that portion of the game. So if I could get to the point where, you know, if they are gambling, right, and not putting this amount of GLs on defense or more GLs on defense than what I have. You are passing the advantage over to me because then you're giving me the firepower to clear through all those squad territories and then you have to beat me in ships. And I like my odds in that scenario. And again, if you've been following my farming guides and my lots of my previous videos, you know how much I hype ships up and how important they are to this game. If it comes down to the ship, the ship territory, I, you know, it's a good chance I'm going to end up taking home that grand arena. Now there are, you know, I, when I do get matched up with someone who appears to be a player, they appear to be a good player. I know they're probably checking my defense history, right? If I know they're testing my defense history and I've kind of had that same defense history for a while, I like to switch it up on them sometimes. And, you know, kind of trip them out right like maybe i throw all my galactic legends on defense which is something i never do or i save them all for offense and just pray they put you know just enough on defense that i could get through to everything again you just got to kind of get a feel you know which matchups you like and which kind of numbers advantages you like find something that works for you and roll with it because you know i almost 
when you're at the disadvantage, I feel like, you know, conceding more to an offensive lineup is probably the way to go, right? Because again, if they save stuff for offense too, they're just, they're letting you in this game to win. I know it's frustrating sometimes being behind in the Galactic Legends, but, you know, take advantage of people who don't set up their lineups properly. Another critical component is which Galactic Legends to put on defense. You know, forever in this game, I had Jedi Master Luke and I had Sith Eternal going up against a team that has, say, three or four Galactic Legends, including General Kenobi. What do they do? They keep Kenobi for offense every time. Why? I likely can't beat Kenobi. And if I, you know, you know, I might have an outside chance at beating Kenobi, maybe, uh, but it's going to be a coin flip or probably less odds. You can literally end the match by putting Kenobi on defense and trying to make me beat your best team. Uh, but so many times they'll throw like Supreme Leader Kyle Ren and like Jedi Master Luke or Sith Eternal. And then for me to take them out, not a problem. Um, you know, same thing earlier in the game when all I had was Jedi Master Luke going up against a team that had, say, Sith Eternal and Kylo Ren. I can't tell you, like 90% of the time, they would put Kylo Ren on defense and save Sith Eternal for offense. Like, what are you doing? Like, I can't beat you with my Jedi Master Luke if you have Sith Eternal on defense. But you, since you misplay them, then I could sweep through and win. So, like, again, Grand Arena, it depends on how much you want to get into it. You know, there's so many different teams and counters and then the modding and now data crons and everything you can do to give yourself an advantage. But I think the easiest, most basic thing, if you can just master how to deploy your Galactic Legends as far as how many on defense, how many on offense, and which ones you put where will give you a significant advantage in the game. So hopefully that was clear to you. I know that was a long and rambling answer on Galactic Legends. Hopefully it was clear to you. If you have any questions, feel free to join my Discord. Ask away. Um, and if you're a new player and this is the first time you're seeing me, check out my farm guide for this year. I really think it'll help you on your farm. And take care, everyone, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.